Hi, Sizun here with another not really a build guide. So there's been added a few new skills which are like kind of like similar to bleed but for spells. So they're basically fizz damage over time and uh, they're really really interesting but there's always a big like worry when you're doing a skill that's completely new. Um, we, we don't always know if it's going to be good even if it looks okay on paper. So I would like to say that this isn't really something I recommend especially to new players. It's a pretty big risk to do a new skill as your league starter. With that in mind, I'm actually going to be starting with something like this. So hopefully I will be able to fire up a really good build guide, assuming that the build is actually good. But with that said, this is not a build guide and this is just some ideas of how I would approach the skills. So we are going to have a few different POBs in here with some ideas of what I would do. First, we're going to be talking about a gladiator spell slinger, which is going to be using multiple abilities. And uh, we also have a trickster, which is going to be self cast. And we are going to finally have a Scion that is most likely going to start out with Spell Slinger, and then it is going to self-cast, most likely Reap, later on. So this is going to be the Gladiator Spell Slinger, and let's talk a little bit about our ideas for that, and make sure that you have the Path of Building Community Fork for following along. So this is the Gladiator Spell Slinger that we're going to be doing, and it's going to be using both Exsanguinate and Reap. So we obviously are not going to have the same amount of detail on the skill tree because we don't really know exactly how this would play out uh, and it would require more like actually in-game testing, right? It's the same reason we don't have any like footage of, well, me using the ability because I haven't used it yet. Uh, but either way, I would most likely be leveling with Ground Slam on a 200 early on just to get to like level 24, maybe 28 and then we're going to be switching to Spell Slinger. So early on you take probably Destroyer and Butchery just to get a little bit of damage early on and then you're moving towards Relentless, Veteran Soldier and Vanquisher. And by the time you have all of these you'll be around level 28 and you should also have your Spell Singer gems. And by now you've also gotten to the library and then we can start buying all the gems we need. Because the new Exsanguinate and the Reap you don't get it as a duelist. So you might be wondering why are we thinking about Spell Slaying this? Well, these obviously cost life to use them, and that's going to be very, very painful early on. You're not going to have a large amount of life, and you're not going to have anything like leech or a large amount of regen, and Vitality is not going to be able to handle the brunt of that. So we're serving it as a mana aura to bypass everything. And uh, that also means that we're bypassing any mana cost, so we can also spam it. And we don't have to worry about cast speed at all while leveling. After getting the damage that's done here, we'd be moving up and getting Sovereignty. Obviously this is very very big since we're a Spell Slinger and early on we're going to struggle with Mana Restoration while the Spell Slinger gem itself uh, lowers the Mana Restoration. If you're new to Spell Slinger builds, the way it works is that you reserve a skill similar to the way you would reserve uh, an aura and, and that reserves your mana and then whenever you use any wand attack, it will be proccing the skill. And uh, that means that it doesn't like, it has its own like attack rate and cooldown recovery. So you don't need to worry about cast speed. And that means that anything like default attack, kinetic blast or frenzy can proc this. Now early on frenzy is going to be your go to because it's going to give you frenzy charges. Later on we're most likely going to be switching to kinetic blast because this way we can make very very good use out of the gratuitous violence which needs the enemies to be bleeding from an attack. Because we can't actually make them bleed through the spell stuff. So with Kinetic Blast and the uh, Blood in the Ice and Gratuitous Violence, pretty much everything that we are killing should be bleeding. And that should give some really, really juicy pops early on. We have two different trees as well. We have a uh, Block Tree, which gives you very, very large amount of survival. And then we have like an early Challenger Node Tree. So to there's a little bit of a downside with Arena Challenger is that you need to be in Sand Stance, which means that you need to uh, use mana to reserve Blood and Sand. However, this should be really, really fun for clearing and doing early maps. A big worry about this build is we really don't know mo how much single target. Whenever we were running some simulations, we should be able to get somewhere like 600,000 to a, a 1 million damage. However, it might struggle a little bit on single target against bosses. So obviously taking something like this on is a bit of a challenge and might not end up being good. We have some cluster jewels here with Master of the Fundamentals and Exploit Weakness. And then we have Exposure Therapy and Ren. This should be really, really strong as well. We're also going to be using the Corrupting Fever attack. And what this does is it's sort of similar to Blood Rage, which you can also use as well. So how Corrupting Fever works is that you sacrifice a bit of life to gain a buff. 
If you've sacrificed enough life within six seconds of using it the first time, this is going to continue going. So to keep using enough life, we're going to use life tap on our kinetic blast. And that way we're hopefully at all times keeping this buff up. You are most likely going to have to like play with this and, and like um, recast it a couple of times from up. And this could end up being clunky, but it should be a very big damage boost. And to help negate like the life cost of this, you could use a life on hit ring or life gain on hit on the gem itself. You're also going to have Enduring Cry on your left click, which is going to give you things like Endurance Charges, and you are going to get a large amount of regen from that. And remember that once you do have Call to Arms, you can have Enduring Cry on left click, and it won't like interrupt you or make you stand still. So obviously, a lot of the gems and stuff aren't in Path of Building yet, so we're going to have to get a little bit creative here. Um, early on, you're going to be using Spellslinger, Brutality, Control Destruction, and then Reap. And you're also going to be having a separate setup with Spellslinger, Brutality, Control Destruction, and Exsanguinate. Also, remember that Spellslinger, the first time you get it at level 1, it's going to like, the more you level it, use less Reservation, and obviously it'll help out uh, with Sovereignty, but just ditch one damage support gem early on if you have too little mana. Remember, as long as you are able to have like some mana for movement abilities, the really, really good thing about uh, Spellslinger early is that even if you're running out of mana and your character's screaming, I'm out of mana! That doesn't actually matter that much because Spellslinger will keep firing even if you're default attacking, which is actually really, really nice. You're going to be using Kinetic Blast, Greater Multiple Projectiles, and then the uh, Life Tap skill, which is we're using Blood Magic here. And then you can use either Chance to Bleed or Pierce. Instead of Chance to Bleed, you can also use Life Gain on Hit to help mitigate uh, some of the, like, the, the life cost. Another good way to get Pierce early is to get Poacher's Aim, which you get from Killing Utula in Act 5. And again, until you have bleed explosions, you do want to use Frenzy early. Later on, you could use Blood Rage. Let's look a little bit at some items. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do like gear sets and stuff for this because we're not 100% sure. But uh, this would look at like something like some mid-game items. Spell damage is really, really good for scaling the build. The most important stat you can get for damage is going to be both levels and damage over time multiplier. So try to get that as much as you can. Uh, and, and crafting damage over time multiplier is really, really good. That's a new craft for getting this league. Uh, especially when we're going block, getting a shield with recover life on block is huge and will make you feel really, really tanky. And if you are able to get an item level 85 warlord helmet, nearby enemies taking increased physical damage is going to be huge. We should be able to get ailment immune pretty easily on this by like multi-modding things like this. Uh, and you can uh, craft avoid ailments on gloves as well. And do remember that there is physical damage over time multiplier on hunter gloves. Amulet, you can get plus gem levels and you can also get physical damage over time multiplier. And physical damage leads his life is actually a very good stat for this build. It's going to be very, very big getting uh, a vulnerability curse ring. You could either get this from a warlord ring, which needs to be item level 75, or you can find them from the physical node in Delve. And they should be more common now after the Delve changes. And other than that, getting life gain on hit on a hunter ring is really, really big. And for this build, we're not able to do like a lot of extra notes in the uh, notes section, but hopefully we are going to be able to pump out some really strong guys for this once we've figured out the build a bit more. So this is going to be the POB for the trickster variant. It's very, very risky and I'm not 100% sure how it would be. However, a lot of people are keen and like the idea of a trickster for a dot build like this. And we have some really, really decent alternatives for leveling because a build like this, you have two options, right? It uses so much of your life early on that it might be pretty unsustainable to level with if you're self-casting, especially until you're able to get some sort of leech or at the very least able to get Patient Reaper. However, we can spell sling it like we do on the Gladiator to bypass that life cost and that also like makes you not have to worry about cast speed. Thankfully for when we are self-casting it, Trickster does get a lot of the cast speed early on. And uh, for Spellslinger, if you are doing that, Charisma is here very, very early, which is nice to pick up. And uh, there is another option as well. We have posted another Essence Drain guide, and that would actually be a really, really good alternative to level here. Obviously, you'd be taking things like Atrophy instead of the Physical Nodes. Another good thing about leveling the ED Trickster is that it's a very cheap respec into one of these builds if it turns out to be extremely powerful, and you don't necessarily have to take the big risk that the new skill is bad yourself. So, that is definitely worth considering. Either way, I would be leveling with Spellsinger and then trying maybe like a like level 40 or level 50 to go self-cast as long as you have Patient Reaper. So we've like given you some ideas of what to do with the skill tree, clusters, and as well as some like uh, what gems you would be using, especially at the end game. But this one is a little bit of a, a question mark. There's some ideas of what items you should be using as well, but 
Out of all the ones I'm going to be posting for this, this is like my least favorite, but I did want to include a tree for those that are really keen on the trickster. And this is going to be the cyan version. Personally, I'm having a really, really hard time deciding if I'm going to start with the cyan version or the gladiator version, but the cyan version probably is the best. Do want to extra give a warning, would definitely not do this on Soul Cell Phone, and also make sure that you are a bit of a veteran player, or at least know what you're doing if you're going to be following this. So there's a few downsides here. Early on, we're going to start by going out here, grabbing the fist nodes, and I am actually going to try using Rend early because we do get it at level 12. However, using your life to cast skills early on does sound pretty scary, especially on hardcore, so I might end up dropping that and going Ground Slam or something like that instead, and that should be pretty easy. Once I get Spell Slinger at level 24, then I'm going to start slinging the uh, gems. The reason we're going to start slinging is because we want to bypass the life cost, and I don't want to have to deal with getting a large amount of cast speed. So hopefully that should be pretty good. I'll be uh, grabbing pretty much this entire section first, and then the next section will be grabbing this. This is what we're going to get last. Now, this build, especially for damage, relies very, very largely on cluster jewels, and this is going to be a large thing for the Scion. Also, Scion gets a lot of its power from doing the Uber Lab. But anyway, let's look a little bit about Ascendancy Nodes here. So we've got, uh, the only thing we need here is Conjured Wall and Mage Hunter. And we're actually going to be block capped even without glancing blows. And then we also have like Rend and Brush with Death. So there's going to be a lot of jewels. And this is why I don't recommend this for Soul Cell Fan. Because you're going to struggle not just rolling the jewels, but actually getting the base type. So for the Ascendancy, we're going to grab Gladiator first. And obviously we don't get this until Cruel. And then at Merc, we're going to get Necro. We do see such an insane amount of blocks, so that's like, I'm really looking forward to that. And then once we get the Uber Lab, we get Path of the Witch, and we can start using the uh, Witch Starter Nodes instead of like pathing through Harrier. So here we have the skills I'm most likely going to end up with. We're going to be doing Spell Singer Reap and Spell Singer Exsanguinate for leveling. I'm going to try experimenting a little bit with Corrupting Fever. That should be a lot easier to do with the Gladiator and like Life Cannon Hit and stuff on that. But we are at least going to try. It's worth trying and... The way Corrupting Fever works is sort of similar to Blood Rage, whereas uh, Corrupting Fever gives you a buff when you cast it, and if you've used enough life uh, to cast things in the next 6 seconds, you continue getting Corrupting Fever. So we would be using something like Kinetic Blast with Life Tap or Frenzy with Life Tap, and hoping that we're attacking enough to use enough to sustain the buff. However, might not work, but you know, that's not the end of the day. So at the end game, I'm most likely going to be self-casting Reap, However, we might experiment with making some Delirium Gloves with the uh, Delirium Essence on a pair of gloves, which gives you 30% more damage over time multiplier, and then doing something like Unleash and Exsanguinate. But we're not 100% sure. Um, I'm going to be running this as my least order most likely. Again, not fully decided between this and the Gladiator. Auras and stuff like that, there's like quite a lot to run here. So a lot of these new skills have a lot of problems we're going to have to fix. So it lit literally will be like a hands-on project to try to fix these things. We really want to get something like a Thread of Hope early. You can see that it gives us quite a lot. We're able to get the Restoration Nodes here. We're able to get Sanctuary, Vanquisher. And yeah, other than that, the other really big hurdle that we have to grab is the uh, large Cluster Jewels. As for items, we have some examples here. It's going to be like a lot of spell damage, fist spell skills, and physical damage over time. We're going to go for a Life on Block, which is obviously going to be huge for us. And uh, just some examples of items here. And trying to get a curse on hit ring is going to be something I will probably try pretty early. Other than that, I do want to stress again that this is not really a build guide and more of like an idea of how I think I'm going to do these builds. And hopefully by me doing them, I'll be able to iron out any like big edges of the build and actually make something strong out of it. And worst case scenario, we'll be able to respec into other things. Again, I hope this video helps you guys. And I do want to make sure that everybody knows that a new skill equals a huge risk. So be careful if you're doing something like this. And I do always recommend to follow like an insanely strong league starter. I have an assassin blade blast that is just going to absolutely annihilate the game. And this is going to be a really strong league starter where you can make a large amount of currency and then maybe wait a little bit and don't take a risk like this. Either way, I hope you guys liked the video and I hope it helps. Let me know if you discover something that might help other people do these builds, post it in the comments down below and let's help each other as a community. I'll be streaming every day live on Twitch and thank you guys so much for subscribing and liking the videos. But more importantly, try to die less than I do.